Voyager 2 is the first interstellar mission of humanity. At 19.3 billion kilometers away from Earth, it is the farthest away it's ever been, and even if we lost touch with it for a time, contact was re-established. On today's grand tour, find out how that happened and catch a glimpse of these cute photos of our neighboring planets Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, Uranus. Also, if you're curious to find out how we communicate with Voyager 2, we'll show you exactly how that's done in this video. Enjoy the ride! In 1977, NASA launched two of the most iconic missions in the era of space exploration. We're talking about Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. They left the tour, which is also referred to as the Grand Tour of the Solar System. This was only made possible by an unusual configuration of the planets on a single side of the Sun. This made a seemingly impossible gravitational leap from one planet to another a reality. It's what's called gravity assist. On this occasion, two probes were launched at the same time because one of the probes had to visit Saturn's moon Titan. At the time of the launch, Titan was considered to be a very puzzling moon that caused great interest among the members of the scientific community. After all, it was the only moon in the entire solar system with a big atmosphere. Since Titan was separate from Saturn, in order to complete a visit to it, a trip that would head directly to the moon had to be planned out. And because gravity assist could not be replicated, there was no way to visit both the planets and Titan with just one probe. And so the grand plan was hatched. Voyager 1 was launched in the direction of Titan, and if the launch was successful, the grand tour of the solar system could go on as planned by means of Voyager 2 taking advantage of gravitational assist to Saturn and then towards Uranus and Neptune. As a backup, if Voyager 1 failed, Voyager 2 would then be redirected to Titan. This illustrated how important a target Titan was to reach and that it would help us unlock mysteries about our solar system. What happened, in fact, was that Voyager 1 was able to successfully complete its mission, thus enabling us to see Uranus and Neptune in that period. If Voyager 2's course had been diverted, we could well have missed visiting two of the most important places in our solar system. Luckily, things worked out as planned and Voyager 2 was able to visit Jupiter in 1979, Saturn in 1981, Uranus in 1986, and Neptune in 1989. Of course, Voyagers 1 and 2 took plenty of pictures. If you haven't seen these, these are actual photos captured in the 1980s. The Grand Tour was completed successfully, but as both probes were still active, they continued to send bits of information here and there about the outer solar system, charged particles, solar winds, and stellar dust. It's too bad Pluto was not aligned in the right way and the probe could not be diverted its way. And while there were plans to build a Voyager 3 and 4, the funds were insufficient and the project had to be parked. The interesting thing is that Voyagers 1 and 2 had made it far longer than most expected it to and was therefore able to send data back to Earth. There was one man in particular who had different expectations about the probes and was imagining them to last for even longer. Carl Sagan was the chief of Voyager Images Reconnaissance and is most famous for creating the Golden Record. The Golden Record is essentially a 12-inch gold-plated phonograph record that was included in both Voyager spacecrafts launched in 1977. The records contain sounds, images, and mathematical symbols selected to portray the diversity of life and culture on Earth. Sagan noted that the spacecraft will be encountered and the record played only if there are advanced spacefaring civilizations in interstellar space. But the launching of this bottle into the cosmic ocean says something very hopeful about life on this planet. 
Because experts knew that Voyager 1 and its twin would be able to travel farther and deeper into space than any other artificial object in history, NASA decided that each of the probes was to carry a message just in case it came across an intelligent civilization. Just a quick reminder to those of you who aren't already subscribed to please not forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bells below because it's super simple to do and it also really helps us with the YouTube algorithm. Carl Sagan had always believed that the twin voyagers would survive longer than other experts believed they would. But they have since surpassed Carl Sagan's wildest imaginations. In fact, they are still active and continue to make invaluable scientific discoveries until this very day. At the end of January 2020, the robotic probe executed a routine somersault to beam scientific data back to Earth when an error triggered a shutdown of some of its function. Repairs had to be made to the Voyager's radio antenna in Australia. NASA had no contact with it beginning mid-March 2020. However, after upgrades and repairs were made, NASA was able to re-establish contact with the Voyager 2 spacecraft on October 29, 2020. Mission operators sent a series of test commands to Voyager 2 using the antenna, which established a signal that confirmed that the call went through. The spacecraft was able to execute the commands without a hitch. Who would have thought that technology designed in the early 1970s would survive for this long and would bring as much valuable data as it has? So how exactly does it communicate data to us? The answer is pretty simple, and it's through radio waves. Electromagnetic waves travel at the speed of light, which is roughly equivalent to about a day for a signal to go from Earth to Voyager. Double that is the amount of time that we need to have a conversation with Voyager 2. In order to communicate with the probes, NASA has its own switchboards, the Deep Space Network, also called the DSN. This DSN is one of space exploration's most valuable assets. It comprises one station in California, another in Canberra, and a third in Madrid. It has been operating non-stop for 59 years and without it, there would be no way for spacecraft that travel beyond the moon to communicate with the Earth. Each antenna has a diameter of 70 meters and one of them is called the DSS-43 and is a 64 diameter antenna. It was six times as sensitive than the original DSS-42 and could therefore communicate with spacecrafts at farther distances from our planet as the signal got weaker. As needed, DSS-43 also supported the Apollo 17 mission to the moon before the antenna's official opening in 1973. To enhance its range, the DSS-43 was extended from a 64 diameter to a 70 diameter in 1987. This was done in preparation for the Voyager's encounter in Neptune, which happened just a few years later. Until this day, it is the largest steerable parabolic antenna in the Southern Hemisphere. Its recent upgrade in 2020 is what has allowed us to re-establish contact with the Voyager 2 after it was flying solo for 7 months. And while NASA hopes to communicate with the Voyagers until 2027, they only have enough electrical power and thruster fuel to keep their current suite of scientific instruments on realistically until 2025. By that time, Voyagers 1 and 2 will be about 22.1 billion kilometers and 18.4 billion kilometers away from the Sun, respectively. Should the probes be able to stay on until 2027, that would be absolutely incredible because that would also be the 50th anniversary of the launch. Meanwhile, the missions continue to provide us with new data on the daily and our science textbooks along with websites and blogs are filled with footage exclusively captured by the twin voyagers themselves. Here are some of them. This is a picture of our planet Earth taken by the Voyager when it was 6 billion kilometers away. It looks like a mere dot in the never-ending universe in dark space. 
Another famous photo taken by the Voyager is called the Family Portrait, and it shows an assembly of the planets Venus, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Mercury and Mars were not visible in the photograph. Meanwhile, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and share. Also, subscribe to this channel so you're kept up to date each time we post new content. Thank you for watching and see you again next time.